Olá, boa tarde. Sejam bem-vindos ao segundo Summit Internacional Américas. Eu sou Adriana Bitar e estarei aqui com vocês nos dois dias de evento, hoje e amanhã. E nesses dois dias, vamos ter bastante conteúdo para responder a um desafio muito importante. Afinal, como ajudar as pessoas a terem vidas mais saudáveis e fazer o sistema de saúde funcionar melhor para todos? Esse propósito move todo o United Health Group, do qual o América Serviços Médicos faz parte. E também motiva a realização de mais um Summit Internacional Américas. Chegamos à segunda edição desse evento com uma programação dinâmica e interativa, incluindo cinco salas simultâneas para debater o sistema integrado de saúde e o ciclo de cuidado. Lembrando que todo o conteúdo terá interpretação em libras e para as palestras em inglês, a opção de tradução simultânea para o português. Na nossa plataforma também temos alguns canais especiais, a área de networking, o Lounge Américas e a sessão Poster. Na plataforma, você também vai encontrar um ícone vermelho, aonde você pode enviar as suas perguntas para a gente. E tem também um mapa para conhecer melhor toda a Rede Américas. Não deixem de fazer uma visitinha em todas essas áreas, que tem muita coisa bacana, ok? Se você já escolheu a sua sala, fique tranquilo, pois será direcionado para ela automaticamente assim que terminar a sessão de abertura. Caso contrário, é só entrar no menu da plataforma em plenárias e escolher a sua sala. Agora vamos abrir os trabalhos de hoje? Quero convidar ele, que é o CEO Américas, Dr. Marco Costa. Seja bem-vindo, Dr. Marco. Boa tarde. Obrigado, Adriana. É um prazer estar aqui com vocês nessa abertura de um evento tão ah, importante, né, que fala direto para o core da nossa missão, né, ajudar as pessoas a ter uma vida mais saudável, né, fazer o sistema funcionar melhor para todos. Né. O compromisso do Américas é baseado na entrega de valor para os nossos pacientes e para os nossos colaboradores. Os pilares do nosso cuidado são as vidas humanas, e para isso, temos um foco absoluto em desfechos clínicos e experiência de excelência. E para atingir essas metas, é uma meta do negócio, é necessário fazer um sistema de saúde mais eficiente e melhor para todos. Eu acho que eu volto para você agora, Adriana, para que a gente continue a nossa sessão. Muito obrigada, doutor Marco Costa, pelas palavras e pelo seu comprometimento em gerar valor para os pacientes. E tem uma pessoa que faz parte do United Health Group, que também está bastante focada nesse desafio. Ele tem uma vasta experiência no desenvolvimento do setor de saúde e vem ajudando a melhorar os resultados e experiências de saúde de milhões de pessoas ao redor do mundo. E agora, ele vai compartilhar um pouco desse conhecimento com a gente, trazendo o macro tema do nosso evento, o Sistema Integrado de Saúde e o Ciclo de Cuidado. Logo em seguida, teremos um papo ao vivo com o nosso convidado. A transmissão será feita diretamente do The Circle, o Innovation Center do United Health Group, em Minneapolis, nos Estados Unidos. Toda a apresentação será em inglês, mas quem preferir pode acompanhá-la em português. Basta ativar a opção de tradução simultânea que está disponível aqui na plataforma. Combinado? Convido agora o vice-presidente executivo de Assuntos Médicos e CMO do United Health Group, Dr. Richard Migliori. Seja bem-vindo. Thank you. I... Listen, I want to uh, express first off my thanks for you taking the time to join the summit. And I wish you a, a very rewarding experience as you go through whichever track that you choose. I also want to thank you for the invitation. And largely because it gave me 
the opportunity to thank you for something else. And that's a thank you for the influence you have had on United Health Group. As United Health Group Brazil, you probably do not appreciate or are aware of how much influence you've had on the way in which we conduct our business and also the way in which we conduct our practices. I'll give you a couple of examples. Right over my shoulder is a data tracking system on the epidemiology for, uh, for COVID. Where did we learn that? We learned it from you and the way in which you were able to track Zika. You impressed us when that disease first became an awareness here in the U.S. We took that awareness and have built it out. Right now, we can tell on any given day how many people in the United States are lying in a hospital bed with COVID. And we use that to start investing in this company so that we have the technology and the analytics, but most importantly, the clinical insight. And so I thank you for the influence that you've had. And I'm going to show you a few more examples as we get going. Today, I want to spend some time talking about the importance of integration and on the cycles of care. Here in the U.S., we refer them to clinical pathways, but the business element that is yield from having physicians coordinated well and collaborating around a common problem on a common patient is uh, immeasurable. So let's start. I do want to go to the point of having an understanding of healthcare expenditures and the impact that we can have. Um, uh, can we advance the slide? Ah, uh, yes. So one of the things that was studied in the U.S., and I am sure that is the same thing in Brazil, is that healthcare has within its expenditure waste. In the U.S., it's imagined to be anywhere from 25 to 30 percent of total expenditure waste. The largest components of that waste, however, 20, a quarter of the, of the waste that we see is because of bad decisions and poor judgment and practice. Another 17 percent is about doing the right thing, but doing, the th but doing that thing wrong. In other words, being inexperienced or unskilled in a particular dimension of care. Between these two elements, you have almost half the waste in the system is either doing the wrong thing or doing the right thing wrong. There are other elements that may be more local to the U.S., but may be present in Brazil as well, including uh, the pricing of certain items because it's not a very clear pricing system. It's the administrative cost from management of a system that is rather fragmented. It can be fraud and misrepresentation of what is done on behalf of a patient. And then finally, a smaller contribution for missing an opportunity to treating a disease. But if we were to focus on those first two elements, unnecessary services and ineffectively delivered services, we could see something that becomes evident as we start doing analysis. One of the things that Optum Insight helped us with is to understand this. If you were to look at diseases and lay each disease out on a spectrum, based on how frequently a given disease occurs and the amount of complexity in the case, you could see that the relationship is here. It's hyperbolic, all right? And when you examine that, you can see to the left side where diseases are less complex, they occur more frequently. There is waste in that system, but typically it's on the basis of cognition, not on the basis of skill on the basis of judgment. As diseases become more complex, talking about transplants or complicated cardiac interventions or CAR-T therapy and a variety of other things, 
then all of a sudden skill becomes more important. The problem is if you're going to manage waste in the system, you have to have a very different solution to separate out the treatment of things that are driven by judgment and the things that are driven by complex conditions. This is also a place where United Health Group Brazil does things well. A case in point, I remember when Charles Suleiman was taking me around when I first was introduced to Brazil, even before the merger, back in 2013. We looked at some of the institutions, and you already had electronic medical records with built-in algorithms of care. That is so advanced in the United States. That is so much more advanced than what you would see typically in the United States, except in its more uh, organized practices. And it was a very impressive reason for us to go forward with the relationship with the United Health Group Brazil. You also did a lot of things on the complex conditions that made a lot of sense. I remember... And, de and uh, working with, um, with Walter uh, Furan, when we would go ahead and, uh, and when Dr. Furlan would, would show us what was happening at Total Core, where there was a concentrated effort to bring together all of the cases under one roof so that you could build expertise in judgment and in skill. As a result, when you had the audacity to measure yourself against the best cardiac programs in the U.S., you scored very highly, all right? It was a center that, that, that we would be very proud of in this country and would be directing people to, just as you do in Brazil. It's rather amazing. And to see that kind of mindset shared really made us clear that we were seeing things out of United Health Group Brazil that made us realize that this was a very important investment. One of the things, just like in Total Core here in the US, we're looking at just heart transplants. And one of the things that we did is we plotted out from national data the performance of every heart transplant program in the country we were able to map out how many cases did they do in a year versus what the survivorship was. And there was a correlation that the more you did, the greater likelihood you have of doing it well. But we were able to identify those very institutions, get good contracts with those institutions, but most importantly, be able to direct people to those centers because in healthcare, it's very clear that the lowest cost form of healthcare is healthcare done right the first time. What's the proof? It's here. If you were to look at heart transplants across the, 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 the United States, you can see that there is a predictable savings that comes about by higher quality. We call it the quality dividend. When you deal with people who know what they're doing, they have better judgment about who needs a procedure. And when they do the procedure, they have better skill. All right. And because we're able to get the volume discounts, we also get a better price. So between the quality dividend and the price advantage, that kind of thinking really drives healthcare. And it was very clear, even as far as I got to meet you back in 2013 that you were already thinking that way. Another area to driving out waste is something else that we were seeing. And we saw this in Brazil. And it was the collaborations of physicians who worked together, constantly looking at their practice patterns to come up with the ideal approach. And when I saw what you were doing with those people with advanced care and putting them into a special track for their management, it was very clear that you were already 
highly evolved as an integrated health system. When we see that kind of integrated health system in the US, we're able to affect some of the lowest costs in care because people work like a well orchestrated organization based on playing the same symphony. Uh, I'm gonna go a little further and to talk about another element in care that we had seen both in Brazil as well as in the US is the awakening to the fact is when you're going to manage uh, the, the quality of outcomes and the reduction in cost or the advancement of affordability, as well as patient and physician experience, you got to look at the whole set of events of everybody who contributes to solving a given patient's problem. Because it's not until that, from the, when the patient examines this, their only view is, was my appendectomy, my appendicitis managed well? Was my brain tumor managed well? And it comes from the fact that when you make a solution, you've got to bring all parties to the table. And the very integrated nature of what we see in Optum Care here in the US and what we see in Brazil for United Health Group Brazil, we have a real appreciation for what happens when everybody is working together knowing their role and playing their instrument to get that fine symphony. The economic impact is evident here. These are the comparative savings in the United States, and I will guarantee you it's got to be the same in Brazil, that when you have way on the right-hand side the savings that occurred as a result of, of being a highly orchestrated well-designed, well-rehearsed, well-planned, full assault on a healthcare problem, you'll get, your greatest, you'll get your greatest benefit. Quality does pay. It pays dividends. There was something else we saw both at Optum Care and United Health Group Brazil that helped us to further understand the adaptive nature of integrated organizations. My dear friend, uh, 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 Rafael Vasconcelos was very proud and he shows me many of the things that you're accomplishing and he brings it here uh, to United Health, uh, to, to the US and shows me, uh, he showed what happened when the pandemic hit and we looked at uh, telemedicine consult volumes that occurred. And you can see just before the pandemic, there was very little activity. But here in Brazil, as I'm showing you in this exhibit, and in the US, all of a sudden, highly skilled physicians were able to adopt this technology and reach their patients in a way that has become to very satisfying. Even with the pandemic, starting to wane. I have confidence that patients are still going to go to see you uh, uh, through this mechanism. Now, one of the things that's important is very early on in this, many of these types of visits were emergency room visits. But what evolved over time is with the convenience of being able to go to telemedicine, patients now are relying on their primary care and specialist systems to get their problems resolved. It is a far more coordinated system because United Health Group Brazil and Optum Care have both gone to that area. <laughs> there are things that can be done to further enhance. You know, at United Health Group, we talk about having three competencies. One of which is across the world, there are 110,000 physicians in this com uh, company. It is a pleasure to be one of them. It's a privilege and an honor to be one of them. 
But one of the things that we learn is first, we need to have clinical insight. Second, we need to have technology. And third, we need to have analytics. In these next couple of slides, I'm going to show you all of those things combining together to make a better product. Here, what you are looking at is ability for a practice to see all of its patients and understand how that practice is going. They can do all kinds of analysis like this one that looks to see when patients are going elsewhere for their care. But it allows you to drill down and to see why they're leaving. What are they getting done outside of your system? Where are they leaving? What diseases do they have? What procedures are they getting? Which physicians seem to have the least loyal patients? So that way you have the ability to go back and to encourage them back into the system. You also have the ability to look at patients and see which are the sickest and to use your analytics to see people that you may want to go further, very much like what you were doing in the past. These are all elements of an integrated practice that are now getting mechanized. Again, even going back to our telemedicine tele, uh, uh, medicine conversation, one of the first demonstrations that I'd ever seen at United Health Group anywhere in the world of effectively used telemedicine is when uh, Daniel Bezzetta was uh, showing us the, uh, uh, the, the neurology consultation from site to site. That gave us more confidence that we need to invest in this because I saw the impact that was had by being able to consult across the entire system with a, a centralized group of neurologists to make determinations about uh, throm uh, thrombolysis, et cetera. It was a very impressive demonstration of what was going on, and it gave us reason to believe we could advance it further. And we learned it from you. I also want to look at, we're also showing you some tools that we're building that much like the algorithms I saw based on the electronic medical record within United Healthcare, United Health Group of, of Brazil, we're able to see the ability to order medications, to understand what the patient's benefits are. So when you were to address a given problem, here it's the use of a, uh, an anti-inflammatory for rheumatoid arthritis. We're able to see things that allow us to understand what other drugs are available, what the, what the patient will be paying for them, and which one of them has the best return on, 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 uh, on outcome in terms of clinical effectiveness. And by doing so and putting it right in the record, it automatically allows us to be able to put in the data that's necessary and to immediately get the approval and to go further. I want to close with two other things that, I, that, what, that I've learned in dealing in is being shown to me both by Charles uh, and by Rafael and by uh, my associate chief medical officer for United Health Group. Yes, the person who is on her way to becoming uh, my successor, Dr. Um, Margaret Mary Wilson. That education is a cornerstone of any effective practice. One of the things that I am very proud of is what you have done with this to build our own journal, to build a peer reviewed process for us to seek knowledge through research and to distribute that knowledge through education in a way that's very disciplined. In talking with Margaret, we're talking now about broadening the scope so that this is a worldwide effect for us having uh, an ability to both research through our patient clinical patient care, but also to teach. Uh, and then one final thing, and you know, I 
want to credit PC in doing this was the ability for us to actually put real capital into education and to educate not just ourselves, but to educate people from across Latin America. And my assumption is it's going to progress beyond that. I'm going to do so. I want to share with you a video uh, that uh, uh, continues to be a place that, that we all are amazed by and something that is very important for me as a surgeon uh, to be able to see this level of education and sharing of knowledge and improving on those two things I talked about, improving on judgment and improving on skill. So let's see the video. O Centro de Educação e Treinamento Edson Bueno, Unidade de Ensino, Pesquisa e Inovação do United Health Group Brasil completou quatro anos. Durante esses anos, nos consolidamos como referência em capacitação médica, geração e compartilhamento de conhecimentos. Nossa infraestrutura e tecnologia de ponta ainda conta com a presença do IRCAD, o mais renomado instituto especializado em cirurgias minimamente invasivas do mundo. Juntos, já atendemos mais de 8 mil profissionais das mais diversas áreas de saúde. A principal missão dessa instituição é produzir conteúdo técnico-científico e divulgar esse conteúdo técnico-científico. E a gente faz isso através de cursos, de estágios, de pós-graduação, de eventos, de pesquisa científica, enfim, no um conjunto de atividades científicas que visam qualificar as equipes de saúde para que possam exercer melhor o seu papel. Nós temos uma estrutura bastante avançada, temos modelos inovadores, didáticos inovadores, de treinamento, quadro de professores de primeira linha e a nossa equipe de pessoal de estrutura é uma equipe de primeira linha que consegue fazer com que é, todas essas ideias se transformem em ações concretas, de fato. Continuamos vivendo um período ímpar da nossa história como sociedade. Para que possamos seguir oferecendo excelência em educação, adotamos todos os protocolos recomendados pelos órgãos responsáveis, a fim de proporcionar aos nossos alunos, colaboradores e professores convidados maior segurança durante esse período. Localizado em um dos maiores complexos hospitalares do país, onde também se situam o Hospital Samaritano Barra, o Hospital Vitória e o Grupo Américas Oncologia, nosso centro conta com salas de treinamento, auditório com tradução simultânea, projeção 3D e integração com o centro cirúrgico, além de laboratórios e simuladores de cirurgia robótica e laparoscópica. Recentemente, inauguramos o angiógrafo robótico Artes Feno da Siemens, único na América Latina dedicado para a capacitação em procedimentos híbridos. Um espaço perfeito para a formação de profissionais da saúde, realização de eventos e cursos. Com a aquisição deste novo equipamento, que é o Artes Fino, nós vamos conseguir ampliar a nossa gama de treinamentos, oferecendo uma oportunidade única, inexistente na América Latina, para aqueles radiologistas intervencionistas e neurocirurgiões para desenvolverem aqui as suas atividades de treinamento. Estamos muito felizes com o que conquistamos nesses quatro anos e temos muitas conquistas a fazer nos próximos anos vindouros. Em nossa história, já capacitamos profissionais do Brasil e de diversos países, como Colômbia, Peru, México, Equador, Costa Rica, Argentina, Portugal, entre outros. Nossa missão é desenvolver, educar e inovar na área da saúde, participando ativamente do aprimoramento do sistema de saúde brasileiro. O Centro de Educação e Treinamento Edson Bueno vem cumprindo ao longo da sua trajetória uma série de, de objetivos que no início pareciam impossíveis de serem alcançados. Né? A medicina é, tem é, evoluído é, de uma forma muito veloz e esse avanço tecnológico ele precisa ser acompanhado de modelos de educação e de treinamento adequados para fazer sentido e dar ao, ao cirurgião e ao intervencionista condições de extrair o máximo dessas tecnologias com o máximo de segurança para os pacientes. E essa amplitude toda faz com que a gente se torne uma organização muito única, muito singular e sem nenhum parâmetro de comparação é, na América Latina. Centro de Educação e Treinamento Edson Bueno, um espaço de inspiração para a saúde. 
So uh, allow me to finish with uh, just a couple of closing comments. Uh, and they're about our admiration across United Health Group for our colleagues in Brazil. We admire your commitment to patients. We admire your obsession with quality. And we certainly admire your courage and heroism throughout the course of the pandemic. Your work, your bravery, and your resilience, even having lost some of your colleagues, is something that causes all a moment to reflect and think with real uh, appreciation and gratitude that we are part of the same organization. And so with that, let me finish up and turn things back to Marco. Dr. Costa. Thank you, Dr. Migliori. Stay with us, ok? Agora teremos um bate-papo com o nosso convidado internacional e, por isso, ele será todo em inglês. Lembrando que você pode ativar a opção de tradução simultânea que está disponível aqui na plataforma. E para fazer parte dessa conversa, quero convidar novamente o CEO Américas, Dr. Marco Costa. Hi, Dick. Um, wow. Thank you, first of all, for your kind words and your appreciation for all the work that has been done by my colleagues in Brazil. Uh, I am also a physician and feel like you privileged and honored uh, to be part of this 110 strong physicians around the world as part of United Health. Uh, in Brazil, we, we at Americas uh, are trying to deliver in most of the points that you made, um, the trade-off between total cost of care, going through education and quality. And I think uh, you made a very strong um, value proposition for all of us to continue to pursue quality as the driving force behind making health more affordable, more accessible, and, and better uh, for the whole system. So I would like to start uh, this conversation with you asking a few questions, and we can uh, follow the questions that have been posed, or we can go off script. But uh, at United Health Group, uh, we all work to make the healthcare systems increasingly more integrated. And it's in this context because we, we can't forget what happened over the past 18 months. I would like to ask you from your research, from your data, from, from where you see the world, what are the lessons uh, from this pandemic that I think will be important for us moving forward? Uh, uh, Marco, that I, I, you know, the, the pandemic was perhaps, uh, it certainly was a tragedy, but it also may have been a, a, um, a professor to us because its lessons should be learned and incorporated. Some of those lessons have been uh, in such things as the use of telemedicine and technology to make things better. Second, it was on being resourceful, quick, act with a sense of urgency, and come up with uh, ideas and so forth to solve any problem. I, we even you know, paid attention when you were building the masks, the uh, face shields, you know, de novo, out of a manufacturing process that had nothing to do with, with health care. But in doing so, you're able to protect the staff. The integration component was clearly evident because when you watch what happened to the pandemic, be it in Brazil, elsewhere in Latin America, or even in the US, 
We all put ourselves back to back to protect each other. And that perhaps was the most important thing. We should never forget the fact that we are a band of brothers and sisters as we start addressing these problems. And the, and the collaboration, the common attitude, and then working together is a part of our culture, which I know was present before the pandemic and since we've known you, and has become an even greater part of the strength of this organization. Thank you for being an inspiration to all of us in the way in which that occurred. And health system also involves integration of the analog world, the in-person interaction in hospitals, medical centers, clinics, and the digital world, you know, the digital journeys, the apps, the websites, the tools, the telemedicines. What we're trying to make is the experience for patients, physicians, and all others involved to better and more efficient serve them. This approach allows organization, coordination of outpatient clinical data, as you pointed out, so important uh, moving forward that we should be able to bring out this fragmented database that is scattered in several databases from a point where information, right, it's so rich, is available in a very simple in a very fast, agile way for both, not just the physician, but the patient and society as a whole. So I would like you to comment a little bit on this importance of, of accessibility and data information in the context of the future of healthcare. Sure, Marco. Listen, I, as I said at the beginning, we have three competencies in this, in this company, one of which is clinical insight knowing what to do and how to do it. Number two is technology, technology that can work fast and at scale. We process some 47,000 electronic transactions every second across the world. That helps us to keep the system running smooth, but also helps us to generate data. And that data goes to our third competency which is our ability to analyze that data, to, to um, curate that data and to analyze it in a way where it becomes useful sense. But one of the things that we all need to remember is that while technology helps us to advance, to become more available, just like telemedicine did, just as, as Daniel was showing in neurology, the technology has to serve the practice and has to be adapted to serve the needs of the physician on the front line, all right? The physician doesn't need to serve the technology. When you look at the most successful practical applications, it was when technology was able to look at a practice and say, ha ha, I'm going to be a good scrub nurse to your operation and to do things that the practicing physician can, has always been doing, but to help them do it faster, more accurately, and at scale. We can't lose those priorities. Indeed, um, we, we can't just focus on technology and, and forget uh, the service that we're providing, the purpose of that service, and the people that are acting, the players, right. the patient, the support staff, you know, the family members who are waiting uh, anxiously for the outcome of the service that we are providing. So I would like to shift a little bit from technology to systems of excellence. Uh, by the way, that's how we call it uh, in Brazil. At Americas, we establish end-to-end -end care through systems of excellence, trying to focus right there where you said high complexity, highly skilled, right patient, but not only doing that procedure, but taking care of the end-to-end -end care of that patient. That's what we're doing today at Americas. And I would like to hear your comment on implementations of cycles of care, the relevance, the importance, and how you yeah. see it driving care moving forward. 
So if you reflect back on the slide that I showed about total cost of care, the only way you can truly impact better outcome and lower cost to its optimal performance is, if, is, is when you have the ability to understand that full cycle of care. Here in the US, we call it the clinical pathway. But your obligation to the patient presenting with the problem isn't complete if you're a surgeon when you put on the bandage. It only is complete when that patient has had their medical problem resolved. The other thing the surgeon has to remember, and I'm using surgeon as an example, is that you cannot do it by yourself. That along the way, there's somebody who made the original diagnosis and the referral. There is somebody who is taking care of some coexistent disease. There is a nurse who in the middle of the night is recognizing a change in physiologic signs that needs to be addressed urgently. It's that kind of thinking from beginning to end where we maximize the contributions of everybody irrespective of their level of licensure in a coordinated instruction that makes this a symphony worth listening to. Indeed. Um, your comments are music uh, to all of us who serve day in and day out the needs of our patients. Thank you. Um, the, 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 the looking forward, right, uh, we try to say here at America's Onward Americas because we are trying to take what is today and move very fast to the future. But the future is, is open today with, with a lot of unpredictabilities and a lot of uncertainty. One of them I will pose is affordability. Uh, and the other one may be access to care. No matter how right. well we serve within our walls, uh, patients can't still get to us or those who can get to us, some of them can't afford. Uh, I already plug in two topics for you, but the question really is, what are you, you seeing the main challenge? How we prepare to future like 2022, 2023 uh, for the healthcare as a sector overall, not just uh, hospital systems or insurance, but I would like to see uh, or to hear yeah. your views and advice for us here in Brazil on how we advance our system. Uh, you're asking a very important question, Marco. That when you start looking at healthcare, we really have to pull our minds out of healthcare for a moment to understand the broader trends and what is happening. Our populations are getting older, both in North as well as South America, right? Uh, with that comes uh, a need for greater and greater um, care services only because of the aging of the human body, all right? Technology is evolving. It allows us to do some things we weren't able to do in the past. Uh, life sciences are evolving, giving us new capabilities. Uh, the antiviral medication announced this morning by Pfizer for COVID, you know, is just another example. So our tools are getting better, but we have trends that we need to deal with. The groups that are gonna succeed are gonna be those that plan the best. And as you start looking forward, one of the things that we as physicians cannot forget is that your success is tied to doing a good job and getting the best outcome. The best outcome results in you not having to rework a complication. The best outcome allows for you to resolve the problem in a shorter window of time. In manufacturing, it's called cycle time, right? What's this cycle of completion, all right? You improve your cycles of completion, your capacity improves. Capacity allows for access. Technology allows for scale. And those are the ways in which we have to think. 
and I'm going to, you know, sorry to, to keep bringing it up, but I think the examples we saw with the way in which you manage stroke in Brazil is clear evidence that if you can start relying on technology to apply a physician's insight and judgment closer to the patient, maybe as soon as the ambulance, that you're going to change forever the impact, shorten the time which somebody is sick with their stroke, increase your capacity for treating people with stroke, and to be what's called one and done. You do it once and it's fixed and no rework. So it all comes down really to all those things improve. Cost, access improves if you focus on quality. I, I couldn't agree more. And, and this uh, reference that you make to tell a stroke program at America's uh, this this is a, an old program that was established here even before uh, United Health came to Brazil. Uh, continues to be a strong driver of what we believe to to offer access to urgent care to those patients in most need. And and, and I'm with you. When I came last year, I came from Cleveland, where we had one of the most established networks for stroke, and I felt that we're still behind what Brazil has achieved and what we have achieved at America in terms of caring for those patients with a telemedicine program. So thank you for referring to this too many times because it's really impressive uh, quality of what you do. It's inspiring. It's inspiring. It is really inspiring work. We're very proud of it. Yeah. And, and the, the fundamentals, right, what we are trying to discuss here in Brazil with our colleagues, with the organization and outside, are basically quality of care. It drives everything. It brings efficiency. It brings operational efficiency. It's not the other way around. And I think we have gone a 20 year path of thinking operational efficiency first and quality of care second as a consequence. But I, I hear you as our leader in our organization. I believe that I think we are bringing this back as United Health in the US and us here in Brazil. We are bringing innovation through quality of care to become operational efficiency and to increase affordability and access to our patients. Telemedicine is a good example, but others opening our outpatient clinic is bringing our doctors to where the needs are. And I think this transformation is taking place in Brazil as you witnessed in 2013, as it's happening today in 2020. Uh, with that, I would like to thank you so much for taking the time of your busy schedule. I know how busy you are and to giving us this uh, tour of, of relevance, of, of bringing uh, back what we need to be reflecting and give you some perspective for where we should be going forward. Thank you so much uh, for being here with us today and opening this two days of International Summit for Americas. Thank you for having me. It's a privilege and an honor. Thank you. Now let's go back to Adriana. Thank you, Dr. Migliori. Muito obrigada, Dr. Marco Costa. Foi um excelente debate. Nós continuamos nessa linha de raciocínio, mas agora abordando diferentes temas e especialidades médicas. Às 16 horas, teremos um breve intervalo de 15 minutinhos para tomar uma água, um café e as apresentações voltam na sequência. E eu ainda não vou embora. No final, eu retorno aqui com vocês para a gente encerrar. Combinado? Uma ótima apresentação para todos e até mais!